Hi, this is Mike Levine for Audio Fanzine. In this video, I'll take you through Pro Tools, Edit Tools, and Modes. Familiarizing yourself with these critical features will make your Pro Tools experience much more successful and efficient. I'm working in Pro Tools 11.3, but these tips are relevant for both Pro Tools 12 and other versions. The first thing you should know about editing in Pro Tools is how the modes work. If you don't understand these, you'll find yourself puzzled by the software's behavior. So let's look at them. Slip mode lets you place your cursor anywhere in a track. There are no restrictions based on the grid. If Avid were to let me rename it, which of course they won't, I might call it free mode. When you want to select and edit audio without any restrictions on where you place the cursor, use slip mode. By the way, a piece of audio in Pro Tools timeline is referred to as a region. Grid mode, as you may have guessed, constrains your edits to whatever setting you have in the editing grid. Grid mode defaults to a setting called absolute grid mode, but there's also a relative grid mode, which I'll explain shortly. To successfully use grid mode, you first need to set the grid to the value that you're going to need for your song or your section of the song. But here's a tip. The grid choices you get are determined by the time format you've selected in the main counter. You can choose from several different time formats, including bars and beats, minutes and seconds, time code, feet and frames, and samples. Typically, in a song production situation, you're going to want to use the grid set to rhythmic values, you know, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, one bar, etc. But you have to make sure that the counter is set to bars and beats in order to do that, the main counter. By the way, Pro Tools allows you to have a sub counter in addition to the main counter, but the main counter is the only one that will affect uh, what you can show in the grid settings. The sub counter won't affect the grid, so it's a good place to show minutes and seconds, so you can see where you are in a song from a time standpoint. Okay, so back to grid mode. After you select grid mode, all of your selections and edits will be restricted to whatever that grid value is. By the way, even if you're not in grid mode, if you want to see the grid lines, you can display them by clicking on the grid button up here. Okay, so let's say I'm in grid mode and I've set the grid for 16th notes. Now I can only select and move regions around in 16th note increments right on the grid. Now if I had it in relative grid mode, if I have a region that's, say, a little bit off of the actual grid, I can keep it in its relative position to that grid with relative grid mode. So let's say I have a region, I want to move it by a bar, I could put it in relative grid mode, and that region, which is just a little bit off of the main beat, will move up by an, exactly by a bar, but stay at that same relative position to the grid, if that makes sense. It's not something you'll use very often, but it can come in very handy. The next mode is called Spot Mode. It's designed to let you place a region at a specific spot, whether it's in bars, beats, and ticks, in time code, or some other format. As soon as you go to move a region in Spot Mode, you will get a dialog box. And you can then type in the exact location, and then it will place it right there. So it's really good uh, if you're working with picture and you want, say, a sound effect on a precise time code location. One thing about spot mode is that you can move the cursor around and select anywhere you want. It's not uh, going to constrain you at all. It feels like slip mode in that way. But as soon as you go to move a region or drag one in from outside or from the workspace or from the clip list, which are two other places in Pro Tools where you can store audio files, then you will get the dialog box. So that's spot mode. Now, the last mode is called shuffle mode. Shuffle mode can be really handy, but it can also mess your session up big time, so you have to be careful with it. The way shuffle mode works is that if you cut a region, whatever audio is to the right of that region will slide left, filling the void you created by cutting out that section. They call it shuffle mode because it's shuffling everything that's on the right side of the edit point as far left as it can go until it runs into another region. Let's say you wanted to shorten a song by an entire section. If you cut it with shuffle mode, you don't have to worry about dragging all the regions to fill the spot you cut. You can just cut it and they'll move. However, when you select in shuffle mode, 
it is not bound by the grid. So if you want to cut out a whole region, you've got to make your selection in grid mode, probably with the grid set to bars. And once you have the selection, then switch to shuffle mode and cut. Then it will move everything exactly on the grid. Another way shuffle mode can be useful is if you were editing a, like a long region that was not tempo based, maybe like a voiceover, and you're having to cut out spots here and there as you go along, but you want everything to stay closed up. Shuffle mode is great there. Again, don't forget though, because if you think you're not in shuffle mode and you are, weird things happen. You make an edit and all of a sudden the piece that you edited it disappears and you can't figure out what's going on or it gets things out of order in your, in your session. You just have to really be careful with it. My rule of thumb is that as soon as I'm done with shuffle mode, I switch back to another mode right away so I don't forget. By the way, if your keyboard is equipped with F keys, there's a set of keyboard shortcuts for switching between the different modes. Um, those are the F1 to F4 keys. They're really useful. Press F1, Pro Tools goes into shuffle mode. F2 gives you slip mode, F3 spot mode, and F4 grid mode. That makes the, the whole uh, workflow faster. So that's a look at the edit modes. Now let's take a look at the main edit tools. Because time is limited in this video, I'm going to just cover the three main tools. Okay, so just to the right of that magnifying glass is the trim tool. The trim tool has three different functions. But I'll start here with the default, which is called the standard trim tool. You use it by clicking and dragging on the edges of regions to change their size and show more or less of the audio. If you're in slip mode, you can do this totally unconstrained and move the edge of the region to any point that you want. If you're in grid mode, you'll be constrained by the grid, so you'll have to move in grid increments. If you're in spot mode, you'll get the dialog box uh, when you try to trim a region. Okay, the second mode of the trim tool is called the TCE trim tool, which stands for time compression and expansion. So this mode actually lets you time stretch your audio graphically just by dragging it. You can make it shorter or longer. Just bear in mind, like with any time stretching, if, if you make the settings too extreme, it can cause artifacts in the audio and just generally sound weird best for small drags or, or for constraining a loop to the tempo of a song or something like that. Third setting on the trim tool is the loop setting. Dragging a region with this setting will create a copy of it as far as you drag it. In other words, if I dragged it half a measure, it would copy the first half of the measure of the selected region. If I dragged it a whole measure, it would copy the whole thing. So basically make a, a uh, duplicate of it. So it's really useful when you're using loops and you want to duplicate them a bunch of times. You can just drag out the loop and you, it repeats it as many times as you want. Okay, now the second edit tool is the selector tool. It has only one uh, function, which is to make selections. It is also governed by which edit mode you're in. In slip mode, you can put the cursor anywhere and select anywhere. In grid mode, it's constrained to the grid. The selector tool functions the same in spot mode as it does in slip mode. It doesn't bring up a dialog box. The third tool, which looks like a hand, is called the grabber. It has three different versions as well. Okay, in its default, it lets you drag regions around either left or right, just by clicking and dragging. You could even use it to move a region from track to track, from a mono track to a mono track, or from a stereo track to a stereo track. And here's an interesting thing. You can actually take a stereo region, use um, the, the grabber, and drag it into two mono tracks, and it will turn into two separate tracks. So if you want to split your stereo tracks, that's one way to do it. The second variety of the grabber tool is called the separation grabber. First make a selection with the selector tool, then choose the separation grabber and drag the selection to a new location where it becomes a separate region. You can drag within a track or from track to track. If you hold down the option key on a Mac or Alt in Windows while dragging with the separation grabber, it leaves your original selection in place but copies it to the new location. Okay, the next uh, way you can use it is called the object grabber. It lets you select non-contiguous regions, which you do by holding down the shift key while you select. You probably won't need to use it too often, but 
when you need it, it's really great that you can do that. Now, like with the modes, you can switch between the different tools with function keys, F6 for the trim tool, F7 for the selector, and F8 for the grabber tool. You can also right click on a region and then you'll get all the options for the different tools and, and their sub tools. But there's an even easier way to use the tools, I think. It's called the smart tool and it's basically like a combination tool. It lets you switch between the different functions of the tools by moving the cursor vertically on a track and it even gives you some added functionality. Turn it on by clicking the little area around the sides and top of the three main tools or you can use the shortcut Command-7 on a Mac or Control-7 on Windows. Hover over the edge of a region in the middle of the track to get the Trim tool. Move over a little bit to the right and staying in the lower part and you'll get the grabber. Hover just to the left of the region or over more to the right on the upper part of the track and you'll get the selector. That added functionality I was telling you about is this little square icon you see, which you get from hovering over the edge of a region between the regions near the bottom or the top, and it gives you a crossfade tool. This allows you to add fades and crossfades in one step, activities that normally take two steps. The one caveat about the smart tool is that it's a little bit finicky, and it sometimes takes a couple of tries to get it to the tool that you want. So you just have to be patient with it and try to be precise where you place the cursor. You'll get used to it after a while to the point where you'll be able to get uh, the tool that you want pretty quickly. So that's a quick look at the edit modes and some of the important editing tools in Pro Tools. I hope it's been helpful for you. This is Mike Levine for Audio Fanzine. Thanks for watching. <laughs>